Man, this year was a great year for music. Charting number three on Billboard 100 singles was I Can't Get No Satisfaction by the Rolling Stones. Number two, I Can't Help Myself, Sugar Pie Honey Bunch by the Four Tops. And number one, Wooly Bully by Sam, Sham, and the Pharaohs. The year is 1965. And this fastback personal luxury car that Dodge clearly copied was on offer at AMC. But before getting into all of it, I'm Jay. Welcome to What It's Like, the automotive channel that inspires you to drive something different. We feature the classics, vintage, some exotics. We love the orphan cars and cars that are off the beaten path. Dive in deep with history, specs, button switches and knobs, design. But most importantly, we show what these cars are are like if that sounds like a channel that you will totally dig subscribe and hit the bell icon next to it to never miss a video 1965 amc model lineup you had the american series which could be had in 220 330 440 and 440 h followed by classic which could be had in 550 660 770 770 h Ambassador, which could be had 880, 990, 990H, and all new for 1965 was the Marlin, which was their car to be the jack of all trades, master of none. They sold the Marlin as a personal luxury car, but it looked more in line with, say, Plymouth Barracuda or Ford's Mustang. It kind of sort of fit the pony car segment. And honestly, that was Marlin's biggest problem. AMC had a stellar product, but had no idea who to sell it to. AMC would make the Marlin for only three years. AMC would rebrand it each year. In 1965, it was known as the Rambler Marlin. 66, just Marlin. 67, AMC Marlin. The 1965 through 66, Marlin was built on the Rambler chassis. And some didn't really care for the design, saying that the short deck long rear didn't look proportionately sound. I personally dig the styling, but hey, I'm into weird cars. In 1967, the Marlin was built on the Ambassador chassis, and those are rare, making less than 3,000. All the panels are completely different on the 67, so parts do not interchange, but they do interchange between the 65 and 66 models. Marlin was designed by Dick Teague. The Marlin was built in response to the praise that the Rambler Tarpon show car received at the 1964 Chicago Auto Show. Just look at that roof profile. It looks a lot like a 66 Charger. It's almost like Dodge just took a carbon copy of that roof line design. Just look at it. It's crazy. The Tarpon and the Marlin have two different roof profiles, but I just think it's interesting that people think that the Marlin is ugly, but in the same sentence think that the 66 Charger is a great looking car. On the outside, they look very similar, but on the inside, the Charger interior is different than the Marlins interior. The Charger had an option for rear bucket seats and center console, whereas the Marlin had seats that folded into a bed, perfect for those drive-in movie dates. Let's talk specs. 195 inches long, 74 and a half inches wide. It rides a wheelbase of 112 inches. It weighs 3,232 pounds. Price, $2,931, which is equivalent to you spending $28,628.05 in year 2023. Total 1965 AMC production was 391,366 units. Total Rambler Marlin production was 10,327 units. Moving on to engines. Lurking in the basement was the 232 cubic inch displacement overhead valve inline six 3.8 liters. It's good for 155 horsepower, 4,300 RPM, 222 pound feet or 301 newton meters at 2,200 RPM with a bore of 3.8 inches and a stroke of 3.5 inches. Compression is eight and a half to one. Features four main bearings when backed with a three speed manual transmission. Zero to 60 could be had in 11.7 seconds. Theoretical top speed of 108 miles per hour while achieving an average of 16.6 
6 to 18 miles to the gallon. Moving on to the middle option, 287 cubic inch displacement V8, overhead valve, 4.7 liters. It's good for 198 horsepower, 4700 RPM, 280 pound-feet or 380 newton meters at 2400 RPM. Bore of 3.8 inches and a stroke of 3.3 inches. Compression was 8.7 to one featured five main bearings when backed with a three-speed manual transmission zero to 60 could be had in 9.2 seconds theoretical top speed of 111 miles per hour while achieving an average fuel economy rating anywhere between 13.1 to 15 miles to the gallon the biggest and baddest v8 offered by amc was the 327 v8 5.4 liters it was offered in two flavors 250 horsepower with a two-barrel carburetor or 270 horsepower with a four-barrel carburetor at 4,700 RPM, 360 pound-feet or 488 newton meters at 2,600 RPM. With a bore of 4 inches and a stroke of 3.25 inches, compression was 9.7 to 1. When backed with a 3-speed manual transmission, 0 to 60 could be had in 7.1 seconds. Theoretical top speed of 111 miles per hour while achieving an average 11.4 to 13 miles to the gallon. Transmissions, you had the 3-speed manual, the Flash-O-Matic 3-speed automatic, 3-speed with overdrive, or a very rare option called Twin Stick. Twin Stick was an option introduced in 1963, and it essentially gave you five forward gears. Two sticks, hence the name, sat parallel, one next to another in the center console. Borg Warner, electric overdrive. And the cool thing was about this setup is you could engage or disengage overdrive on the fly whenever you wanted to kick it down or whatever. If you wanted to impress your friends you could literally just do it whenever you wanted to do it why this never caught on is beyond me but 1965 was the last year for this option side note bit of a different topic but still on the same kind of thought why don't car companies now offer two speed rear ends like hear me out they could do 373 which is a really good highway gear and 290 when you're at highway speed shift it into 290 could you imagine the fuel savings that you would experience catch the new marlin by rambler first of the very fastbacks catch marlin's style nobody else can marlin sports fastback with stretch out room Production is limited, but the excitement isn't. If you're strong enough to handle one, catch yourself a Marlin. The new man-sized, very fast back from Rambler. Marlin. By Rambler. Catch it if you can. Here now, the great new look in the world of automobiles. Marlin, America's only 3 plus 3 fastback. Marlin, slashing style. Marlin, startling performance. Hook on to a Marlin now at your local Rambler dealers. So let's talk styling. Look at these bezels. Notice how the headlights sit inside these bezels. Also, just check out all of this texture effect here in the grill. Just look at how all of this is designed, as well as bumpers. Turn signals are located in the bumpers. Look at how this comes up. Coming up to the top here, look how this is all channeled. That is actually a really interesting line. I don't know if you can tell it from the screen. But there's there isn't this hood isn't smooth. Look at how these spears kind of come up. Marlin badge there.
So just check this out. Look at how these are all flared. Look at these side mirrors and how this is all look at that love how this rocker trim is all textured this car does have drip rails run the length of the car also notice how this car is two-toned the black it, the roof is black and this is red and then the black continues down here look at how these are flared out also look at where the exhaust comes out gas filler is on the driver's side i love this as much as you can one person can retain just look at how these bumpers are designed also look at this trim piece here it's got this nice textures going on these rear tail lights also just check out the design from the top down <laughs> it's very interesting because it almost angles in towards this part here nice rambler badge backup lights right here so check out this door handle before we get inside just notice it has like a little tiny channel inside of it this door has some heft to it just check out the door panel itself just also notice how far the door opens it opens up pretty wide almost 90 degrees to allow you to get in it's got this nice bright work separating color I also love this texture here armrest door handle to get out window crank for the big window just notice it's all trimmed out it also curves This car does have vent windows. Check out the sill plate. Emergency brake, emergency brake release. Brake pedal, there's my hand for reference, power brakes. Foot pedal, just take a look at this interior. Here's what over the hood looks like. Here's what first person over the hood looks like on to the button switches and knobs starting on the left and moving right windshield wipers headlights fan speed for low and high weather eye just below that with three sliders temperature air and defrost speedometer with odometer and right turn signal indicator inside of it fasten seat belt light right above that is a brake light which i think it's to remind you that the handbrake is on Coolant temperature, amp meter light, oil pressure light, gasoline gauge, left turn signal indicator, ignition, map light, lighter, radio, which is an AM, FM radio. Notice there are three presets for FM and two presets for AM. Clock. Underneath the steering wheel, there is enough space to put my hand in between my lap and the steering wheel but it's really tight. This one has an ashtray and it's located right here. There's also an ashtray over here for the passenger. This one this one has this one has a center armrest as well as center console which it's locked. But just look at all of the different textures in this console area. This one has a flash o -matic. That's pretty cool. Up above, there are sun visors. And look, they're texturized. There's uh, stuff above 
the sun visor so I'm not going to pull them down but just look at how long they are there's a little bit of a gap here for the rear view mirror which has a daytime nighttime feature right there there's another sun visor over there same thing I'm not going to pull it down because there's stuff up there so a bit of a confession it rained that day I did not get to get in the back of this car but we actually did a 65 Marlin on the channel already and I'm going to use the footage from that car here Matt you got a light in the back seat here there's a really big shelf in the back if you wanted to get anything sun baked you could put it back there underneath that big window so check out these seat belts they're really cool they're mounted in the floor and this is the connecting part here they're like old school they're almost like um airplane seat belts that's what the airplanes use now but those were what seat belts were in the 60s all right so you get in the back seat you just push this forward sit down in here pull the seat back in the seat where it's in the position right now there's lots of space but if they moved back I'm sure that the space would get pretty tight it's pretty tight sitting in the front I will say even with the seat all the way in the back all the way pushed back it's still very cozy in the front seat So check this out, all the seats fold down into a bed. Just like the Hudson Cross Country Brambler wagon we did. It's also worth noting that it doesn't go completely flat, but you can put a pillow here, just like this. Now it's flat. And you can sleep in this car very comfortably. They made them so, you know, if you're taking a long trip or something and you got tired you could pull off the side of the road and sleep it off and just keep going the next day coming in here just... look how small that trunk is it's absolutely insane but it goes back that's a full-size spare it goes all the way back inside of there so i mean you got a lot of trunk storage space. The opening is just really small. Also cool to point out that you can see kind of light coming through it with that emblem that they have on the back, which I'll show you after we shut it. That's the, that's the emblem. Sunlight comes through there. Okay, getting underneath the hood on this one. It's a little bit of a trick. Uh, you have to put your fingers through here. There's a little bar that comes down. And it, you have to do it all in one motion. So you grab this with your, like your middle finger. So the latch on this one, I don't know if you can see it. There's a metal bar that comes down through. You have to put your fingers through here and you just kind of feel it. Can you see that thing moving around? That is the latch. And you have to do this all one motion. You pop it, pop it up and pull, pull it up. It's tricky. Why do we show that? Because they all open different. Under the hood of this rando AMC Marlin that I found off the internet, notice the color difference is a 327 nestled inside. Notice the power steering pump as well as windshield washer bag. This one has dual master cylinder power brakes, which I believe was added. Also notice how the valve covers are attached. It's just two wing nuts. I always thought that was really cool. On the positive side, these are rare, but they are affordable, plush, interior with front bucket seats, historical oddity, seats fold into a bed, big trunk against it. This car, even though it came out before the Dodge Charger, will always play second fiddle to that car. It doesn't even make sense. They're not really in the same um, car bracket, really. Some just never like the proportions, the long back short front. This car also has a small trunk opening, possible rust prone, and just know it has a torque tube instead of Hotchkiss drive. All right, now it's time for Would You Rather. Two scenarios today. In the first scenario, would you rather have a 1965 Plymouth Barracuda or 1965 Rambler Marlin or 1965 Ford Mustang Fastback. I'm going to leave this here for a minute. If you need more time, feel free. Pause the video.
The second scenario is a bit out there, but which one would you rather have? 1950 Oldsmobile Sedan Net or 1965 Rambler Marlin or 1949 Cadillac Sedan Net. Once again, gonna leave this here for a minute. If you need more time, feel free. Pause the video. Now it's time for Name That Tune. First person to get both the name of the band and the song title correctly in the comment section will have their comment pinned to the top of it. Bit of an easy one today. They've been pretty hard and I honestly absolutely love that song. I love it when that song comes on. Anyway, thank you all so much for coming out and watching this. I'm sorry this one was kind of hodgepodge together, but um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. And I really do dig everything that you guys bring in the comment section. I love the stories. I love the comments. I love the feedback. And I just, I love interacting with you guys because I try to run this channel like a car community and not just a car channel that I'm very much a part of. But if you would like to reach me, like talk to me one-on-one, -on -one, shoot me an email or check out our Facebook group that correlates with this YouTube channel. Both of those things will be linked in the description below. Just know, I appreciate everything that you guys bring. And until next time, toodaloo!